Well, hello, sexy monkeys. Welcome back to Sky Gene Experience. I'm Ben. We're going to talk about why the Ghost in the Darkness is so fucking awesome, dude. Oh, I love this movie, dude. Seriously, how is this so underrated, people? This is such a great fucking movie in a hundred fucking million ways, and I cannot wait to talk to you about it. And I do have the book for y'all. Haha. -ha. Oh, yeah. I did do a full movie commentary, which means I put a movie on, not on the video, but like, at where I'm at and I was watching I talked all about it I did say that I was not doing movie review but you know what fuck it why am I the fuck why am I not so if you want to listen to commentary everything I'm going to tell you right now is in the commentary but it's spread out throughout the movie and some but if you do not want to watch commentary you just want the movie review I'm just going to give you the movie review now and I can add some cool clips into this because commentary there's no clips there's no videos it's just strictly me talking throughout the whole movie so i'm gonna give you a little bit of you know clips and audio and all that stuff on this one first thing that comes to mind for this is the music the soundtrack i think the soundtrack is like the top 10 of all fucking soundtracks in my house it's unbelievable. I cannot get over how great this soundtrack is, and there's nothing else like it. It beats Black Panther's soundtrack easily. Seriously, there's like 10 plus songs on this soundtrack that are just home the fuck run, dude. Amazing. They hit home at, on being home in Africa. Speaking of Africa, they actually filmed in Kenya. I mean, not the actual legit location of where this happened, but they were within like 50 miles of the actual location. Like, that is unheard of that Hollywood would do that. And their production budget was like $55 million. Uh, but Michael Douglas, that played Remington, he was a producer on this, and last minute he became Remington. But with Michael Douglas and Val Kilmore on board early, Gave him that production um, of 50 some million dollars. And Val Kilmore he personally absolutely loves Africa. He's been there a handful of times. So when you see on TV his character, pa Colonel Patterson, like all smiles, that's because Val Kilmore is one happy motherfucker, even though he went through some shit just before this. Like he went through an ugly divorce, and the movie before this just fucking sucked. So he wasn't that he needed this to really help him and you see it in his character as you guys know this was a true story this is colonel patterson this is his book about him talking about it's his actual autobiography no it'd be more of a journal it's his journal of that events so this really did happen in the the skulls and the skin of it is in chicago at the field museum so that you can check that out which is actually dope i cannot wait to do that and when i go there i will i will definitely show you guys i'll make a nice little video of it but it's amazing this really did happen and they really killed 135 if not more workers and a lot of people think why why was this so different because you gotta realize at the time though there's this huge disease that happened where it wiped out a bunch of their their prey for example like the gazelle pretty much i wiped down that area because a bunch of disease and they also had canine issues which gave them a bunch of pain which means they couldn't hunt the way they wanted to hunt and you gotta realize this area savo means to slaughter um the region of slaughter the area of slaughter because that was a huge slave trade route for hundreds of years and there'd be a bunch of dead bodies shallow graves just easy to get to so the lions in that area developed the taste of humans which did not work so well for these guys because you gotta realize there's the bridge at the river and it's like eight miles each direction that they have all these little camps and you got to remember back then, this is 1896, there's no electricity. So at nighttime, the only, in between these camps, there's pitch fucking black besides whatever lantern you have. So it's so easy to just get taken and you're fucked. 
a lot of times what happens to be sleeping they would grab pull you away into the darkness and just all you can do is hear your friend get eaten alive dude it's just disgusting i can't even imagine but these things what makes these lions different was they were hunting in ways they'd never hunted before which is daylight broad daylight just straight up you know no fear at all and they were doing it by almost every day they were killing every fucking day it was we it was crazy how many they killed still we don't know how much they say at least 135 it could be 200 it could be 300 but for sure over 100 100 percent over 100 you see a problem with that actually no let us prepare for battle it did win a Academy Award for sound editing and you really see it in this because the soundtrack and the sound editing just mix so beautiful together and then the cinematography it's one of the best cinematographies out there you, I can't even get over how beautiful the landscape looks even at one point in real life, they said if it was really clear skies, you can see Mount Kilimanjaro, the white caps of it. But throughout the whole movie, you just see it's a be you're not in Hollywood, you're actually in Kenya, and it shows. It's speaking of real Kenyans, the warriors, they're all dressed in red when they try to go kill the lion in Paris and you know, misfires. Those were real warriors from Kenya. I think they were called, yeah, Mase Masia warriors. So that was fucking amazing seeing that. And if you're wondering, the character of Remington, Michael Douglas, fictional character. That character, totally fictional. So just that has nothing, to, does nothing in real life. And really the only difference between the movie and real life was in the movie they had the actual like hair, the, the manes, the big shit. In real life they didn't have that. That's really the only difference. A lot of this is just so accurately portrayed well. It's a fucking amazing movie. I cannot get over how great this movie is. Oh my god. In my opinion, this is Val Kilmore's best performance of all time. Better than Tombstone, better than He, even better than Batman. I, it's it's really close with him being Iceman and Top Gun, but he he had if he had more screen time in Top Gun maybe, but this he was front and center. He had a like I said personal divorce and a shitty movie just before this, but he stuck it out. And I fucking love Val Kilmore in this movie. Best performance of Val Kilmore, hands down. <laughs> The fact that they actually used real lions in this movie was the key thing because there's one scene where the CGI kind of stuck out a little bit, but besides that, they only used a puppet for one scene. The rest was all real lions, and it's all the trick of the camera, trick of this, but that was, for me, a fucking amazing because now you see all these stupid movies, 100% CGI with, if not, all puppets. And the puppet doesn't stand out. The CGI is such. You just right there. You lose me, dude. You lose me hardcore. But that's what they did with these lions. Wow. I, that's why I love these early movies. That's why I love pre CGI. If you get that shit right, this movie's trying to hold up, and it still holds up tremendously well. And throughout this movie, you get a lot of like Easter eggs of Jaws. So, for example, like in Jaws, Robert Shaw character was telling Hooper, "All oh, that cage ain't gonna work. The anti-shark cage." Michael does it. Michael Douglas character kind of does the same with Patterson. Well, you know his, you know, his coming up with the tr the the trap that comes down, or even the one that when he sits high up, um, he's a lot of people are like, "Oh, that ain't gonna work." Blah blah blah. And also in Jaws, you have three grown men taking out a creature. In Ghost in Darkness, you have three grown men trying to take out the creatures. So you, And then throughout the movie, you also have several other little Easter eggs of Jaws and 
I hope you can catch that because it's cool when you do see it. For example, when you watch Jaws 2, when Shaw like looks to the sea, in this movie you have one of these local, he looks to like the grass and he sees the lions. And then in Jaws, when Hooper is like in the cage and he thinks the shark's in front of him but appears behind him, they do that with the lion. They think the lion's in front of him, the lion comes out from another angle. So you see, it's, it's like that stuff when you notice Jaws. Overall, for a Sky Gene score, I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10. Absolutely fucking love this movie. It holds up fantastically, and I'm going to watch it to the day I die. I remember when I was a little kid, I had it on VHS tape. It was recorded. It had a masking tape, The Ghost in the Darkness. And the left corner tape was always sticking out. I always wanted to peel that shit off. But absolutely love this movie. It's high up in my house. And it's high up in my Val Kilmore list. But yes, 8.5 for Sky Gene score. All right, Section Monkeys, I'm curious what you all have to think about this movie. I am... I'll love to hear about it because this movie is a million fucking million reasons why I love this movie. When I get done reading this book, I am going to do an episode about the difference between the movie and what really happened in real life. Because I'll get down into the real details of what really did happen. And then I'll add some that wasn't in the movie also. And I'm actually excited. I've started reading this and it's actually, it's hard to put down. So... All right, sexy monkeys. I'll see you all later.